We're in a very fortunate time and period in history, right? We live with, with the largest animals that have ever lived, as far as we as far as we know, right? We've never found anything bigger than a blue whale by by mass. These are massive, massive animals. Before we had all these nice technological tools, we had to look at old records. So this is Discovery Reports is a big voyage that, done by the British in the 1920s and 30s where they looked at, they kind of measured a ton of humpback whales and blue whales and actually have nice um, measurements then and records of like how big the flippers are in relation to the, to the flukes and how big the flukes are in relation to the whole body size. And so you could have all these similar ratios that we can use to then say now, okay, well, if I know the length of a blue whale, I can then predict how long its flippers are. And then once we know things like how long its flippers are and how big its flukes are, we can look at things like maneuverability. How does a whale actually move underwater? And how does it actually use its flippers and its control surfaces to control how it's actually swimming in this weird three-dimensional environment? The best way people could study whales is by getting them in their hands. And so they would, they would kill a whale and they'd have it up on deck and you could actually measure how long the whales are. And it turns out that their whales are very hydrodynamic. And so they have these proportions that are pretty consistent from animal to animal. So you could measure, for instance, the ratio of how big the flippers are to how big the overall animal is. That, simila that similarity of ratios. Um, but now, of course, we don't do that anymore. We don't kill whales, we don't go out and do that. They're an endangered species. They're also really big to handle them. We can't capture them and like, ask them to do tricks for us. Right? Like, these are really, really big animals. So how do we study them in the field? Okay, so what we'll do is we want to find these, these whales in the wild. So we'll take our small boat out. It'll be me and maybe three colleagues. We'll go out on this small boat and we'll try to find blue whales out here in Monterey Bay. And the first thing we do when we find uh, a whale are two things. We, one, try to take a picture of the whale. But from the boat side, you can only really see a little piece of the whale, right? So if the whale's surfacing, all you can really get a picture of is the dorsal fin up here. But we use that dorsal fin to help identify the whale. And so we could say, oh yeah, we've seen that whale before. We, um, that whale has, comes through here every year. Or we've never seen that whale before. Or maybe that's a, maybe that's a young whale. And we can, we can kind of learn a little bit about that whale. The other thing we try to take a picture of is the whole backside of the whale. Well, how do we do that? Well, we do that by using drones, by using UAVs, unoccupied aerial vehicles. So we'll get on the boat and we'll launch the drone up in the boat and uh, we'll send it, it's like playing a video game, right? We'll send that, video, that drone over the top of the animal and try to get a picture of that animal while it's at the surface. And you only get a couple of minutes, you have to be quick. You get that drone over the surface because pretty soon that whale's gonna dive beneath the waves. And if you know the height of your drone and you know, um, uh, you know if that, that whale's at the surface, then you can use the um, triangles, basically this, the principles of similar triangles, to measure how long that whale is um, when it's flat on the surface. And you can use that then to estimate things like its body mass and how big that animal is and how much food it can engulf.